equivalence principle, uh, the happiest thought of Albert Einstein which came to him in 1907. And according to this, um, an, uh, an experiment or an observer cannot differentiate between uniform gravity and acceleration and uniform acceleration which means constant acceleration actually. Which basically means if you have a uniform gravity field and you conduct a, an experiment here and you have a frame that is accelerating upward such that A is same as G and you conduct the same experiment, the, the results of both experiments will be same. You cannot differentiate between the two results or you cannot do an experiment which can tell whether you are in a uniform gravitational field or you are in an accelerating frame. Now you can conceive any experiment with you think of like people talk about sh experiments involving shooting lasers um, like if you have an accelerating frame, if you shoot a laser, an observer standing on the platform of this uh, accelerating frame will see the laser go down, simple fact because the, the elevator is moving up or this frame is moving up. Similarly, if this is true, the gravity should also do the same thing, that um, the gravity should bend the light. And this is what actually Eddington observed in I think 1917 that he saw, his team saw that uh, sun bent the light coming from stars. And that was actually sort of the f first major proof of theory of relativity. So using equivalence principle many phenomena can be predicted um, like time dilation and thing, gravitational time dilation and things like that. Uh, just based, based on this idea. That itself is a, a big thing. But Einstein really didn't stop here. What really spoils um, what really spoils Quillen's principle is a non-uniform gravitational field. <coughs> For example, let's say Earth. The Earth's gravitational field is not uniform and also in height it's not uniform and these are called tidal forces. What then? Well certainly if this is the first case and this is again the first this is the first case and this is again the second case A equals if you call this G as the magnitude of the gravitation field certainly the direction is changing then any and you can always devise an experiment <coughs> that can differentiate whether you are accelerating in a uniform in, in a frame or you are actually standing or doing the experiment on earth. So how to get around this or, or actually how to really reconcile this idea. There are actually there is a strong equivalence principle, there is a weak equivalence principle and according to I think this is weak equivalence principle and this is a strong equivalence principle, the one I am going to talk about is that locally that equivalence principle <coughs> holds locally. <coughs> so, which basically means you just talk about doing experiment in this very narrow region where gravity is constant or uniform. <coughs> So, well, you see, like for example, um, if there is an elevator moving up with an acceleration A and you drop two balls, looks like a guy, but anyway, you drop two balls, in a uniform acceleration, you will see that this is what happens. But if you are in a gravitational field, 
and you drop the balls, the ball are gonna look like this, gonna drop like this. Now this is because of the curvature of the earth, the way gravity is acting. But if you really are really these balls are not really very far apart. Let's say this is d distance is large. But let's say you are not really very far apart. The balls are actually very close to each other, like regular elevator. Then you really cannot tell the difference. This wall will more or less dro drop parallel to each other. If d is small, which means you're talking about local, local experiment. And so basically, the current principle it holds locally. So if you do not change, if the experiment is sort of located in a region which is local, um, I don't know the, how can I describe the quantitative way of defining local, but I think there should be a measure of that. I look into that. What is the what, what can be a quantitative definition of word local? But anyway, we are talking about very small distances here. Here, these are large distances. Then locally, um, where gravity is not changing much, uh, we can always say that you cannot you cannot do an experiment which can differentiate between the gravity and constant acceleration. Now, if you have a case let's say the same case for like falling balls we know that all these dropping ball experiment will look like this let's see let's assume these two two lines as the one as a path of the balls which have been dropped and they are identical i'm not able to draw them identically but they are identical and they are radially inward So all these lines drawn will be parallel and will be same as what will be observed by a guy standing in an accelerating uh, frame. Now the thing is for local equivalence principle to hold The local space time should be flat. This is a requirement. If this is not flat, we can again do the same thing. You can differentiate between the two parallel uh, the two experiments. So the local space time should be flat. And looking at this setup, one can guess that mass curves space time curvature which basically means that if you have a free space where you have just an accelerating frame or a uniform gravity and you have multiple multiple experiments or let's say you shoot a light ray your light ray is going to fall like this. But if you have a curved space, then your light is going to fall. I'm sort of exaggerating the whole thing, but that's the idea. Like this. So here the, the deflection is less compared to here with deflection here. As a matter of fact, GR predicts a factor of 2. In deflection. So this is two, twice the deflection than the first case. So, so GR looking at this, one can sort of um, conclude that the matter, the earth, is actually bending the, uh, curving the space time and the motion of the light ray is not like this but like that. And um, so I'm sort of giving a very um, um, not so satisfying explanation because Einstein himself took many 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 years 
um, because in, he gave his, this he, he understood this thought came to him in 1907 but actually the whole theory of liberty was given in 1915 like eight years after a lot of frustration and hard work so it will be injustice if I just sum up the whole thing in a line um, so so, to, so the basic gist is that the matter curves the space-time and that satisfies the local equivalence principle so, so more or less actually the study of GR is nothing but study of how matter curves the space-time um, and that's actually using that one can actually manipulate and understand a lot of things from time machines to black holes many things can be understood just from this basic idea that matter curves space-time so is the curvature which is the hot keyword right here and it's the curvature that usually people start with when they start studying about general relativity so for the following classes we'll, we'll um, study some of the elements which will eventually lead to curvature how is curvature defined and how is curvature calculated given some uh, situation